Tell yeah. me this, and be, I'm gonna let you go on this one. You know, I, I have looked, there are a few people um, in this industry that, you know, you don't, you don't typically pick people in this industry to emulate your life after. Not when you were close to the industry, because you know mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. crazy this place is. Mm -hmm. but, but Kurt and Goldie's relationship, the way they have defined what their relationship is gonna be for them, mm -hmm has been such an inspiring thing for, I think, a young person wanting to, sure. to be a partner to someone. Yeah. For you, what is, I don't wanna say the best piece of advice because that seems so like trash I know what question, but like what, what, what's what been like the thing that you've always taken from their relationship? Yeah. Like if it's I just, can get that. Communication, man. I know it sounds very trite and it's what everyone sort of says and it's cliche, but you know, you just have to, when you're feeling something, you can't let it build up. There's resentment that can happen. You just got to say it. You got to be open and say, this is what I'm feeling. The other thing too, is just a stick to mm -hmm. I think in relationships in general, we're too quick to sort of leave. Something bad happens, I'm out. That's not the way that life works. And this is my opinion. If you're in love, if you think that there's something worth fighting for or you know, you have a deep connection with someone, you got to work on it. You have to work on it. And these roadblocks might come up, these obstacles might come up. And I think we're too quick to just bail because it's much easier than do the work. Right. In order to have a relationship for 40 years, there's no smooth sailing all the time. Hopefully, you know, a nice wind at your back. But for the most part, you know, you're working at it. You got to work at it. I mean, I've been with my wife for 20 years. It's amazing. But you got to work. That's just part of the deal. Don't just throw it away when it gets hard. That's kind of what, you know, how, how I, I, I do it. That's how I've witnessed. That's what I've witnessed, you know. Sibling revelry, which yeah. I love, uh, which is kind of a play on sibling rivalry. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of the stories that you, that you two tell, I would imagine are firsts for the, the both of you, right? Like you, mm -hmm. you lived your life and your experience, you didn't live Kate's, right? And so mm -hmm. to hear her talk about the same experiences has got to be a little, you learn things about your sister in this process. Oh, for sure. No, I mean, it's been really, um, first of all, it's, it's just been fun for us to do something together. No doubt about that, right? Um, we haven't done anything creative together. And this is the start of hopefully a lot of things. But uh, even from a personal standpoint, it's been great for us. Um, we do get to learn more about each other. It's funny when you have the microphone in front of your mouth, sometimes it's easier to say things and be more vulnerable with each other. You know, I don't know where that comes from or why that happens, but I just, I just feel a little bit more open and I can tell Kate things that I've felt and she can do the same. Um, we can sort of get into who we are through our guests, learn things through our guests about us, you know what I mean? So it's been, it's been really, really fun on a lot of different levels for, for I, Katie. I, I loved the story, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, if, I, if I'm getting this a, a, a little mixed up, but I believe it was the story where you, were, you, were, you guys were talking about growing up and mm -hmm. how um, you were like, hate, hated the fact that the family was famous, that, right? That this was the, the, the experience that you would have, that you're like, leave us alone. And Kate's like posing for <laughs> pictures. I just, I could already imagine like, oh, shut up, shut up. Uh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, Kate, Kate's a, Kate's a born performer, man. She came out of the womb singing and dancing. And, and yeah. that's, just, that's her spirit. Um, and I was just a little more introverted. You know, I just was a little bit more kept to myself. Um, I'm sure Kate wasn't fully loving the fact that, you know, we were getting hammered with, with people and paparazzi and all that, which of course she does as well now, but it's just, it comes with the territory, you know, I mean, it's, it's hardly a sacrifice when right. you look at the, the opportunities and what we get to do and how much fun we get to have in our jobs. Right. It's, it's hardly a, a sacrifice, but as a kid for me when you're eight, nine years old and you've got people coming up to your mom, again, people are like, oh, that's Goldie Hawn, but no, no, that, that's my mother, all right? Nice. You know, I, I'm not looking at her as Goldie Hawn, I'm, that's my mom, and now, you know, I'm, I'm, I want this time with her. Mm -hmm. Now, you're taking that away from me. As an, as an eight-year-old, that's an unconscious sort of feeling. I mean, you're, yes. it, 
happening. And, and I, I remember having those feelings of like, man, can I just have moments with, with my mother, you know? But the, the reason I brought it up, Oliver, was because I thought it was a really sweet realization that it almost seemed like you came to, as a result of being a father yourself, right? Like you were in that same story, I believe you were talking about, mm -hmm. you know, how mean we can be to our siblings, to the people that we love, right? Like how we can tease them and not know how our teasing can be internalized and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that after having your own kids, you realized how protective you are of yours. You know what oh, I yeah. mean? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, specifically with my daughter, because when I'm yelling at my sons, who aren't including her in things and are sort of dissing her, I'm almost yelling at my seven-year-old self or my 10, sorry, 11, 12-year-old self right. who was protecting Kate at the time. Because I know how she felt, I'm sure, with not being able to sort of, you know, get into my orbit. So when my sons are sort of rejecting my daughter, it makes me crazy because I'm essentially angry at who i was yeah <laughs> yeah it. but listen like, logical but you know i mean that's sort of what it where it comes brother from. then you make up for it i believe in, in some of the sweetest kindest ways this photo mm -hmm. oh photo, yeah painting your nails a lady <laughs> i mean this is just like this has to make all a lot of that other stuff kind of melts away for moments like these oh yeah yeah i mean look as a parent, you take the good things, you know, and you want to you want to amplify those, and then sometimes then you take the things that you want to do differently. You're conscious, you're aware, you're aware of those as well. So it's all a big experiment. I mean, I always say this: it's not about if you screw up your kids; it's just about to what degree. You know what I mean? We're all trying our best, and we're, we're doing it the best that we can. And I'm sure in you know, there's pieces in there where your kids are like, dad, what are you doing? Why, why are you being this way? We're just, we're, we're, we're just trying, man. We're, we're just yeah. every new Everybody. day. Tell me this because one of our, our producers is fast, endlessly fascinated with the fact that your family all together um, goes out to camp. Mm -hmm. Is this, is this really the case? I mean, is it, is it you? It or more so, you know, I mean, this this last summer we got on the road. My brother Wyatt was big into it before us. And then the whole family caught on. And now we this is what we like to do. I mean, it's the ultimate family time, really building campfires. Oh, is, it, is it weird for me to think of Goldie Hawn? I mean, I know it's your mom, but is it weird for me to think of Goldie Hawn and, and Kate Hudson out camping? You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Really? Yeah, they're badass. They they know what they're doing. Yeah, we forget that Goldie Hawn, you know, wasn't Goldie Hawn when she was born. I mean, that woman has been through a lot and has done things that I would I could never even come close to imagining doing in my life, just because I was afforded much more opportunity than she was, just yeah. because of the way I, that I was born into. Right? That, that's that's yeah. not lost on me. So she has struggled and been through her stuff man and had to sleep in cars and been on the road i mean make her life so she's she's a, she's tough and so is kate time to get back to it you got your bag oh boy road trip got the sanitizer right here Co uh coach this thing is looking a little the psa that you're a part of is like okay there's still some things you need to keep in mind while we road trip right yes sir oh i'm a big first of all road Road tripping has been a part of my life for a long, long time. Yeah. I'm actually camping as we speak. Not, and I, it may not look like it because I, I, I found a little dwelling, you know, to do these things on. But, but uh, no, I mean, true, we are opening up right now. And it's easy to get complacent because it feels like real life is finally kicking up. Mm -hmm. But we do have to stay vigilant, you know. I mean, in my car, I've got a slew of masks that I put around my gear shift. I've got hand sanitizer in my car. I've got gloves. It's just, I keep my, my pack of stuff just so I don't forget. And by the way, I learned something. What's that? Hand sanitizer gets too hot in your car. It gets over, above over like 105 degrees. It's no bueno. So keep that in mind. You know, oh, we gotta, you gotta, you gotta somehow keep it cool, right? I Cause you don't think of that. Yeah.
Yeah. So I'm learning a lot. <laughs> and and then sharing it, sharing it. You know what I mean? Like, wait, but you just mentioned you just mentioned you're out you, you kind of like in a in a in a camping situation. We see yeah. the structure behind you. I, I, it has been described more like glamping. I do both. OK, I'm not going to lie <laughs> now, but I, I do I, both. <laughs> this isn't this isn't I'm not in a glamping situation right now. OK. I, Camping, and now I'm sort of heading back. But we were in Paso Robles, and it was actual camping. I, I bought a trailer uh, in August um, just to try to get on the road with my kids yeah. and experience America. You know, from a, a camping standpoint and from getting off the grid. And I, I just I think it's important, especially with technology today and how inundated we are and our kids are with it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just got to check out and. Uh, so that's that's a part of our life now and it's been amazing really okay so which what who in your family extended or or uh, core is the least likely to successfully camp like who is the one who's like okay guys i think the book sprays out and so so am i, I think, <laughs> i'm deuces i think i'm out you know what i mean i was gonna say my sister but she did pretty good this time you oh know? yeah we are, we're all into it. You know, we're all into it. It's, we all grew up, you know, between uh, my, my family and I, you know, we grew up between LA and Colorado. Right. So we, we got a good taste of what it's like to be in the woods and to camp. So it's, it's not that foreign. Um, everyone is pretty, pretty proficient. And we've been in a lot worse situations as far as tents that aren't opening, raining, wind. So nowadays, you're in a trailer or a sprinter or something like that you do have some respite from the elements but everyone's pretty good everyone's everyone everyone's pretty good brother con congratulations on everything i feel like every time we see you you're reaching a new height and you're also using what you have your platform to make an impact it's not just to like boost yourself it's not just just to, just to make money but that you're right. actually in this to make this at least a little bit better to move through the day and i really really appreciate it brother Oh man, and I'll end with this by saying, like you know, again, you you talk about making money and all that. Like this, this PSA is important to me because I do think that we. I don't want to get complacent. It's time to get out and explore, but just it's simple. Just stay safe. Keep vigilant right now, you know, and and keep that stuff in your car. Keep your masks in your car, you know, and just uh, and then cruise. Go see the world. Just do it safely.